Okay, so let's start. Actually, Jen, let's start with you. Um, why don't you introduce your character? Uh, my character goes by the name Muskrat. Um, she's a little, um, she's human and she's kind of a little bit of a thing. She kind of gets in and out of a lot of different places and uh, she kind of blends well. So she, you're her, she, she could go with a larger crowd or she could fit in with some more rough characters. So her clothing seems to be pretty generic in a sense of like traveler's clothing. So she fits in the, uh, she, she's very social. She loves people. And um, so it's kind of funny how she, she kind of knows a little bit about everybody and it makes it easy for her to get into a lot of different places because she's so nice to everybody. <laughs> um, she does have um, a very quirky thing that she brought in from her last game. She's wearing around her neck. <laughs> Jonathan, you were right. Um, she's wearing around her neck a necklace of dried hands that have been painted to make them look, but they're shrunken. They're like shrunken hands that look like this. But you know how gross that is? It's very gross. <laughs> And I have them wrapped around my neck like jewelry, and I wear them with pride. <laughs> Very cool. Kazuka, I, you have the opportunity to follow that up. I do appreciate that. I do not know what a torton is. That's my life form. Um, really? According to my character, according to my... Well, I don't, I don't know, because I'm familiar with D&D. &D. That's not a That's D &D okay. thing. Did you, did you imagine Kazuka as a human? I played him as a human. I, I think we should stick with that. That Torton okay. is a spelling. I mean, it's a it's an error. I imagined Kazuka as a as a man, so not a turtle. So okay. <laughs> I think that would have if I knew he was a turtle, that would have changed how I played him a yeah, bit because we were dealing with frogs and other crazy stuff. Yeah. No, he's a he's a human man. <clears throat> All right, I appreciate that because I'm a poet. But I'm a writer, and so I've kind of moved away from uh, my poetry back upbringing, and I write stories. And so one of the most favorite things I like to do is insult people, especially those who, who challenge me. But what I've found is I'm not really good at consistency. Or if I'm consistent, I'm consistently bad. Or if I'm consistent, I am consistently good. So I need to find that that vibe that's really going to work for this adventure. And I do not wear any human body parts on my body. That's OK. Yeah. <laughs> that weirdness is reserved for Jin. <laughs> OK, Cammy, I'm going to put you on the spot. You get to follow up with number three. Why don't you, you know, in like fashion, kind of introduce who you believe your character to be. Yes. Um, so my character goes by Fesh, and he is a young elf of 95 years. He has piercing eyes. When you stare into them, they glow like the moonlight, and white hair that he keeps neatly tied back in a braid. Um, I think the most outstanding thing about him is just the magnetic energy that he has about him, which when you're around him, it's a calming presence. and feels like it, he draws you in like the stars. Ooh. Uh, he's an arcanist. <laughs> Very cool. And in my world, the arcanists, arcanists are specifically students of Energia, the force that ties everything all together. Mm, so I like that. Yeah, as opposed to being a theist who begs the gods for power, uh, the arcanists have figured out the mathematical and geometric solutions to manifesting energy oh that's beautiful so i'm going to give you one option in my world there are elethrian elves which mm -hmm. are the elves that left their homeland to travel to the world to teach humans they stand mm -hmm. very much taller almost appear a little bit alien like uh very distinguished kind of like james cameron avatar creatures or there are the Vidarian Elves, which are traditionally the beautiful humans with the pointy ears. They remained behind in Durania, letting the humans sort it out. Um, and when they are in this world, they tend to be, you know, like on for a specific purpose or mission. So they don't actually live on the planet. They just kind of travel 
back and forth between the star world. Um, okay. you have, yeah, you, I believe Fesh is Elithrian because he was fated by the stars to serve humans. Oh, I love it. That's great. Great story. That's exciting. Um, Brother Dogoth. I was going to ask, what? Am I human? Yes, he's a human. Okay. I couldn't, I did not know what he, that was. Yeah. That the knees or something? Yeah, so that's uh, a man That's a man of the kingdom. Okay. So you were, you were born in this kingdom. Okay. Hmm? Yeah, so Brother uh, Dogath, he is a monk, but he is, he's kind of slow. He's not all there, but everybody loves him, and he has a really good heart. So he tries to please everybody. Nice. In his own way. <laughs> Nice, fantastic. So I'll begin the introduction and I will introduce your character's primary motivation in the introduction and then we'll jump into the story. Um, considering that this is a one shot, not necessarily a long standing campaign, um, come with the basic assumption that you want to go on this adventure and that you want to work together. Um, I love rivalries and if you engage in any sort of, you know, argumentative drama, as long as it's entertaining to me, I will issue out little hero coins. If you have one hero coin, you can re-roll any of your poor dice rolls. Um, keep up. You can only have one per at a time, and you can transfer them to another person if you wish for them to re-roll uh, a poor roll. Speaking of, everyone has dice, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. I got my lucky ones and my unlucky ones, just in case. <laughs> yeah, I'm super big on analog, the sensory experience of rolling real dice, so please, thank you for honoring that. Um, it's, it's, it's an important part of the game, I believe. Okay. And so for now, our story continues. The sun shines sickly through the morning haze. The town of Sultana struggles under the blight of Mulgren, the Black Dragon. Ever since he laid waste to the region, the survivors gathered in towns near the coast with boats always ready to set into the ocean in case he would strike again. Survival has been the theme for most folks here, but you are not most folks. As opposed to taking the bystander approach, you act because the itch to change the world stays ever present in your thoughts. Muskrat, this region now belongs to you. Maybe you live in the fishing village of Lufkin or here in Sultana, or maybe you traveled from the mining town up north in Thornish. Either way, you are presently in Sultana with a peculiar opportunity ahead of you, of which, of course, you're always on the lookout. Kazuka, with your level of education, perhaps you are from the great city of Porto Mavia, or even from the kingdom's capital, Tetherna. However, now in Saltana, between the smog and the smell of fish, you are here and forever crusading as a hero. Brother Dogoff, of the Order of the Cloverblade, sworn to protect the people against all oppression, be it from hordes of orcs descending from the mountains, or even the shadow workers from corrupt officers in the government. Here you are in Sultana. Duty calls as you act as an anchor in this community, of which you represent the Cloverblade. And Fesh, the arcanist, the student, the teacher, you arrived most likely from the capital of Tetherna, where the Aletherian Elves instruct in the ways of Energia, life manifests in everything and every one. You are also here in this town. In one ear plays the melody of the ocean, and in the other, the snoring of a dangerous dragon. Having always been the optimist and a dreamer, your eyes peer ever over the horizon rather than your two feet. Your eagerness to discover and uncover may lead you toward mind-boggling riches or your very doom. 
And by strange chance, each of you stand inside a church, but not just any church. A repurposed watchtower dedicated to Persep, the god of vigil. The watchtower views the swamplands to the west and the ocean to the east, where peacocks and hens make their home as the patron fowls of this god who is ever watchful. A woman stands before you, Iris. She looks at you with fear in her eyes and a trembling opportunity on her lips. At this point, Muskrat, how do you appear and what do you pay attention to in this moment? Inside a church, right? Or inside a church? Indeed. So maybe I'm kind of like dusting myself off a little bit, kind of looking around, seeing what's going on, who's around, maybe sticking my nose into places I'm not supposed to, like the poor box. <laughs> Just in case it's dusty, you know, checking it out. And um, maybe humming a little tune as I'm going, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just totally making a fool of myself as I'm as I'm trying to make myself comfortable in a church because I'm not comfortable in a church. So um, maybe I go stand by um, Kazuka because I know Kazuka, and I'll be like, "Hey, Kazuka." What do you think? What do you think is going on here? Why are you here? Did, did I miss something? I know I don't listen very well. Kazuka Muskrat whispers over to you in this watchtower of a church. How do you respond? So just so I have the gist of everything, all four of us are here. There's somebody else here. She's standing next to me. In my head, I was standing next to Brother Dogov because he is he's the anchor from based on what the the preface of all this he's going to be an anchor to our adventure so what through communication or whatever muskrat mm -hmm. stay by my side today please okay. because you're, well i have a feeling you're going to get us into a little bit of trouble this is a church I'm sorry. I know it's a church. I always get in trouble in churches. You know me. I can't help myself. But there's no money in the poor box this time. I promise I won't take it. So have you checked? I did. There was, it, was, it was very empty. How close are we to whatever else is in this? Like, is this like a pewed church or is it a temple? What's its structured like? Like, what is it rectangular? As a repurposed watchtower is circular, cylindrical in shape, there are no pews, but there is a place where someone may speak to a congregation that is gathered inside. And like a watchtower, it has stairs that leads up to the second and the third and the fourth level all the way to the top. Do we see any symbolic imagery inside of this place? Yes, indeed. As you look on the walls, you see the, the peacock artistry of the peacock with its multiple eyes fanning out from its feathers, ever keeping watch as this is one of the most holiest creatures for Persep, the god of vigil. There are lanterns lit like candles lining the wall, praying and ever keeping watch. Um, and there is a few nurses who are going up and down who are keeping watch over uh, the sick and the injured who are kept on the higher levels. And of course, Iris stands before you as a very plain woman with blue eyes and sandy hair. And uh, her hands are folded as she's allowing you to get comfortable in this room, yet has something to say. Brother Dogoth, how do you appear in this area and what do you pay attention to? I am wearing just a simple robe. Um, and I think I'm just paying. I'm paying attention to probably I'm more drawn to the sick and the nurses, but um, is it possible for me to go walk that direction and just um, see what I can find? 
Indeed, if you want to walk upstairs, you find your way oh, up upstairs. Okay. Yeah, you can find your way to the second level. Although there is a nurse who is gathering some basins of, of hot water and she's boiling near a campfire. And she's uh, she's in line of sight if you wish to engage with her. Sure. As you walk over to her, she stands to greet you. Yeah, can I help you? Oh, this is such a great day. How are... How are uh... Is, is everything uh, going good today? I oh, know it's, it's Irish going, is, brother, it's going, going all right. Yeah, it's going all right, brother. How about you? How are you doing? I'm oh, good. Haven't seen you in a while. Oh, that's right. I saw you at that picnic that one time. I didn't know. How's the juggling routine going? <laughs> Not well. <laughs> I gave that up. Oh, that's fine. Well, you, you were entertaining enough, at least for all the drunks. I'm sorry, they came out the wrong way. You were entertaining as it was, but I guess you don't care. I haven't had a drink in quite a while. Oh. Those days are behind me. Snickers, she, snickers. Yeah, she 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 looks at you hardly as if she is waiting for the punchline. She looks at you as if she's waiting for the punchline. Oh, you're I'm, serious. I'm just staring at her blankly. She pockets her flask in her blouse. Well, um, I guess I better get back to work. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. She hurriedly and a little sheepishly embarrassingly runs off back towards caring for the sick. Go ahead. I guess I'll just go walk back to the group then. And Thesh, as you're standing in this room, how do you appear and what do you pay attention to? Uh, Thesh, he's very watchful and he feels immediately drawn to the two strangers standing together, Kazuka and Muskrat. So he decides to approach them and introduce himself. Um, he'll say, Dear friends, I am an arcanist of the highest order and I have been fated by the stars to be here in this moment. Uh, it is an honor to meet you and offer my guidance and protection. And he bows respectfully his eyes never leaving yours. I'm gonna whisper to Kazuka. He's so shiny. He's so His shiny. His eyes are very shiny. What color are your eyes? Never Thank seen you. They're, they're silver, like my mother's. Wow, you're beautiful. You're so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. So are you. <gasps> I, I, I like your necklace. You. Definitely not. <laughs> That's so bad. Oh. Kazuka, it's a good day. It is a very good day. What brings you here, Fesh? Fesh, is it? Yes, my name is Fesh. Um, I had a sense that it is our destiny to be here right now. I don't know what it is, but I know we're here for a higher purpose. But we do know, and this is going back to the Game Master, we do know that there's a dragon that's messed this place up. We do know that. The Black Dragon. You indeed know that Mulgren, 80 years ago, destroyed and made Firewater's desolation. And since then, the region of Tetherna, cities like Thornish, Sultana, Lufkin, always live under his shadow, fearing to wake him. Yet Iris has specifically called you in secrecy. Thesh arrives with no beckoning at all guided simply by the stars. Brother Dogoth, you would know Iris very well indeed. Um, she motions you to come over and welcomes everyone into a circle as she begins to speak. Well, <laughs> you made it. And then she speaks a very polite Alethrian greeting to you, Fesh, to recognize your, your patronly power here. I would like to know, <laughs> we have um, an interesting opportunity ahead of us. There is a book written a long time ago, ancient, forgotten, called Fire Reflects in the Eyes. It contains ancient drawings of geometric patterns, rumored to instruct and teach in the art of inertia. This ancient book 
<laughs> Possibly you've heard of it before. Rumored to be lost. Well, I had a dream the other night. I was walking in a very terrible place. She begins to whisper it. In the castle of Mulgren, the black dragon. And th through the castle, I passed by mounds and piles of treasure, artifacts and gold, and no doubt taken from the very good people of Tetherna. But what I saw paled in comparison to the mounds of treasure. I saw the book, Fire Reflects in the Eyes. I woke up and all the candles in the church were lit. Mind you, I didn't light them all and I was the only one on duty. And there was a peacock standing before me in my bed. And it looked at me with piercing eyes. And then it looked its head toward the west. Excuse me. Looked its head toward the east. I always get my directions mixed up. It took me all day to think about it. But now I believe in my heart of hearts that this was a visitation from Persip himself. Looking towards the east where Mulgren's castle lies. I believe Persep wants me to find that book. Nevertheless, my duty and calling is here, and it is today that I am the only one working. While we do have nurses and servants, it is my job to stand vigil here in this tower. But brother of the Cloverblade, I know that you uh, are very devout and able to guide and lead and protect. Kazuka, I know with your extensive knowledge of stories that you would most likely be able to find this book. Muskrat, I'm not entirely sure why, although in my dream there was a muskrat. And so, out of faith, I just called for a muskrat to arrive, and yet here you are. And Fesh, I do not believe that it is anything but destiny that you are also here. So, if you would, retrieve this book and change the world. For if it gets in the hands of common people, there's no telling what we could learn. Muskrat, how do you respond? I'm going to roll up my sleeve and be like, look, I have a tattoo of a peacock right here. That is a blessing. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so fantastic. Person, yes. keep watch over you. Yes. But like, you saw me or? No, no, I actually saw a muskrat in the swamp. Oh, okay. It, and so I, I just tried to piece everything together. And so I, I prayed a muskrat would arrive to me. And when I called for a muskrat, the nurse brought you over. Well, you know, maybe that's like meant to be. It's just meant to be. I'm supposed to be here. And I brought Kazuka with me because Kazuka always comes with me now. You don't buddy. look like a rat. I am not a rat. <laughs> Why would you call me a rat? That's so mean. Well, that's your I'm name. going to read. I don't need that in my life. That's terrible. Tell your, you look like a rat. Tell your mom to name you something different. Mom was a very nice lady. And Muskrat is a very nice name. I like my name. My dad gave me my name. It's... It's beautiful. Oh, good. Good. Well, well, so we're supposed to go and find this book. Well, I... But wait, Muskrat. I need to know something. Okay. And I need to speak to Iris directly. Oh, okay. You called each of us except for fish directly how do you know me i do not know you how do you know even my name to have summoned me here well i i i think everybody knows who you are kazuka <laughs> you you come with a quite a reputation especially coming into this small town when it became known that 
storyteller. But I was summoned to be here. Yes. Well, I, I, yes, I did. My nurse called you to join us here today as soon as possible, as soon as I heard you were here. So you're looking for a hero. <gasps> well, okay. I mean, going into Mulgren's castle is not going to be something entirely safe. Yes. Waking him would spell the doom of at least one of the cities nearby. Yeah, Arousing yeah. his wrath. Uh, I know it's the swamps are dangerous now. Yeah. He's ruled it, and he most likely has lackeys and orcs guarding his lair. But waking him would be the end, possibly of Sultana. Azuka, you could write a song about this. Yes, exactly. Can you imagine the legends? That would go down if we did actually find this occultic writing. I'm going. Do... I'm going. You're going? I'm going. I want to be a hero. I want to be a hero. Mummy. Well, then... Copyright. Fesh? How do you respond? I'll, I'll definitely be sticking with the group as we choose to go, but I'm curious to do some kind of. Um, insight, uh, get insight or perception on Iris hmm. if there is anything, if we should trust Iris information good, you may make a wisdom check that'll okay. be a 9 or higher um, sorry for the newbie question, d20, right? yes, chunky boy Okay, <laughs> that would be an 8 hmm is Iris hiding something. That counts for anything. It's what? Uh, I have a three on my character okay. sheet. Three wisdom. So you, you rolled an eight on the die? Yes. And then you would add the three, so eleven. Oh, eleven. Okay. Which, yes, which definitely succeeds. So you get a feeling that Iris does not entirely know what she is getting herself into. Finding this book would change the the technology of magic as we know it hmm. and if it was in the wrong hands it in some ways it being in the dragon's horde protect is protected because it's hidden hmm. it is occultic and evil powers are not able to steal it or contend against okay. a dragon nevertheless maybe an evil sorcerer would barter with the dragon and trade with it mm. so this powerful book is able to be studied by definitely a Lethrian such as yourself and taught but this would be something like the holy grail it would mm. change the way people do magic and understand it okay yeah I have a good feeling about this guys I think that we should seek this out Sticking with her, him. I'm sticking with him. He's shining. He's, shining. He's gonna lead us like a star across. He's shiny. Path. He's a star. This is a yes. dragon. Dragon. I, I, we are. We are not dragon. I'm not going to be dragon lunch. Well, well I, 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 I don't want They're you so to be boring. dragon. <laughs> yes, I don't want you to be dragon lunch. So, I know the journey would be dangerous. So I have. I have snacks. Sa well, snacks. Yes, I have snacks. Um, your favorite food, I have made in faith. Cookie. And consuming this food. Lombard bread. What is it? Well, I, consuming this food would restore your health when the journey is needed. It has been blessed by Persep. Um, Cookies. Yes, it has been made with peacock feathers. So, Muskrat, what is your food that she hands to you? Cookies. All right. The cookies are 1d10 of healing, should you need it. You have to you eat it in order to, <laughs> or be fed it. Uh, Fesh, what is this food that she presents to you? Oh, sorry, was that me? Yeah, yeah, Fesh. What is the oh, food, yeah, what is the uh, food she gives? Yes. Uh, rosemary baked potatoes. Mm. <laughs> and Brother Dogoth. I like sticky buns. They're so delicious. <laughs> My mom used to make them. And Kazuki. Hey, um, can dragons read? Why does a dragon want a book? Oh, what? you should know, Brother Dogoth. Dragons hoard. They consume. They 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 hold. They lord over 
the countries like misers and people come from miles around to beg barter <gasps> and trade with them it's a, it's a form of economic slavery if you will with all the power in their hands they could hold their dragon fire over any king and extort them for giving back the own money that they taxed heavily on the kingdom um, anyone going for this book to trade with it would have to give up a great deal in order to please the dragon this is a black dragon however this is not a fire dragon this is not a red dragon or do all dragons are all dragons relatively the same except for color uh to other color dragons? is a wonderful way of describing their demeanor and black is heartless and cruel and uh, but he's also brief. instinctive and he's not intelligent based on other gameplay design structures all dragons are intelligent to a degree and enjoy a good repartee but can eat you if they chose to i'm very aware of that part. <laughs> In fact, I think it is said that if you do not roll, if a dragon chooses to eat you, you must roll a 20 on the dice or be eaten. I'm not going. That's <laughs> how I want to go out. But I wait, out. But, so we need to find out where this place is. If we need to go get the dragon, Fesh, well, I know who's lunch. Oh, I didn't even get a cookie. You do need to get lunch. So, Kazuka, what is your favorite food? Cookies. No, I was wanted, I always wanted to try Lemba's. Lemba's bread. Always. <laughs> Lem nice. Oh, yes. From the stories. Uh, the yes. Stories, yes. Absolutely. Yes. You did make that. You can have Lemba's bread. All right. With all of your supplies, everything ready, um, you do uh, know the way to Mulgren's Lair. It is a well-known landmark, although the journey through the swamplands is riddled with danger. My dad took me there. I know the way. <gasps> You've been there? I saw it. We hid in the bushes. Well, can we go and not hide in the bushes? Because, like, I don't want to hide in the bushes. I want to go see the dragon. You just need to have some, like, um, some, some water shoes. You're going to get wet, I think. Ooh, nice. Money. A muskrat. <laughs> can, you, can you acquire us some special shoes, muskrat? Oh, yes. Journey? Yes, I might, I might know where to get them. Yes. And just swing by. the. Um, there's a trapper nearby that is carries, like, a whole bunch of these, like, water skin shoes. They're, they're excellent. I have a great pair on myself. I'm modeling a pair of shoes right now. And yeah, we'll we can go there. Some, we will also need some smelled, smelled something to Ooh, something that smells something off. that dragons like to smell because we need to um, strategize this. We don't want to, and we're going to put that smell on something because we need but to. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I don't want to smell too good, then he'll want to eat me. That's the whole point. We need to put it on something else so he go chases it. Oh, I see what you're saying. I think we a need distraction. A distraction. Need, That's the word I can't say. We need a sheep. We're, we should take a sheep with us because they like to eat the sheep. And then all we have to do is set the sheep out and then it'll follow the sheep. Dragons do like to eat bones. No, 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 Brother Doga, do you understand that we're going to take a sheep with us? A sheep. A sheep? Yes. A sheep. Do sheep like rats? Where will what? we acquire the sheep? Yeah, where will we acquire the sheep? There's a farmer to the east of here that mm -hmm. I'm friends with that we could hit up on our way out of town. I know a lot of people. Yes. So yes. we'll hit up the shoe place lots of good stuff and then we'll go over to the farmer because we're going that way anyway aren't we east yes. we're going yeah. east we're going east even though i did is we still in the church are we still in yes. the church yes. we're not in the church because no. i wanted to know if i wanted i really wanted to know something can we go back like five minutes did did we smell alcohol on iris's breath no you didn't okay know. just making sure yeah okay 
She was not under the influence. Because somebody okay. else was. This is they must be working. My, my nurse friend had had some wine. She had herself a little nip of something earlier. <laughs> she did. I was making sure. She's not supposed to have it. Okay, so shoes, she shoes. Let's go. Do y'all yes, think that she's good? What was that, Fesh? Well, I said time is of the essence, so we yes, should please. head out. Let's go. Let's go. Hit up my trapper friends. Each in of town. you, each of you, are able to acquire these special shoes that'll help you muck through the swamp. And one of you is able. No, I'm gonna say two of you are able to score water shoes, like little large um, snowshoes that allow you to keep from sinking into quicksand. Nice. It is Kazuka and Fesh. Nice. Fesh, you instinctively brought these with you. They're like little um, tennis rackets, if you will, that keep you from sinking mm. into quicksand. So Kazuka and Fesh, you are immune to the effects of quicksand. Okay. Okay. And then I wanted to ask... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Fesh, oh. Go ahead. Oh, does Fesh have the power to levitate? Uh, you can... You can you can do that. Yep, you would have to roll to cast... Oh, okay, it's for yes, short, you, short bursts. Yep. And, and if okay. as long as you do the incantation correctly, it can happen, yes. Okay. I need to make a trade-off, though. I have, I'm a, for being a poet and a historian and a writer, I am freaking strong. Muskrat needs my shoes more than I do. I could trudge through the mud. You're so good. She's light and small, and so she going to sing. Or you, whatever you are. Muskrat. Make about me for in your song of your story. Like, so can I give my the shoes? Baby lost Muskrat. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, I don't want to write that story. And then Muskrat, you see the farmer, the shepherd. Hey there, Muskrat. What hey, you doing? Hey, how you doing? I, I mean, last time I was here, you had these these sheep, sheep here. Do you still have your sheep? Or do I or... still have sheep? What else am I gonna do? Well, you had pigs and goats last time, but I just wanted to know if you still have the sheep. It's that time of year. Do they still have their coat on? Oh yeah, absolutely. Haven't sheared them yet. It's nice. Well, do you think that uh, I could borrow one of those sheep? Um, borrow? What you gonna do with science. it? You bring it back? It's for science. I mean, we all have. Science. To have a I, I don't know about that science stuff. That's pretty. I, let me. You know, I have. I have. Maybe I could just leave something with you to borrow it, and then I, when I come back, you can give it back to me. Would okay. That this, work? this is weird. What do you want a sheep for? Why are you so interested in borrowing a sheep? That sounds weird. Well, no, 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 hear me out, hear me out. So I have this idea about how a sheep can float. And so I got to take it out and I'm going to run some experiments to see if it floats in different kinds of liquid. All right. At this point, he kind of looks over and eyes Fesh. He lowers his eyebrow to you and says, hey, just between you and me, I'm not sure you're hanging out with the right people. I mean, those high-minded... Wait, can he read my thoughts? Yes, yeah. Sir, we have... Yeah, we have a greater purpose here. I wonder if there's anything that we can get you in exchange for the sheep. Hey, 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 just don't turn me into one. Here you go. And at that point, out of fear of the elf, he just hands over the sheep to Muskrat. Just get, get on out of here. Just blessings on your people. I'll bring everything. it back, I just, promise. Too kind. It's, it's yours. Don't worry about it. Just... <laughs> we now have a sheep in tow and a distracting odor how yeah. do we gather that? that it smells already because it still has a coat on it okay I, i'm gonna say, yeah i could do that i'm gonna say uh a young sheep yes would be very attractive to a dragon huh? this this smell would um, definitely entice it and make it weak at the knees do you guys have a leash I have a rope. Yeah, she I have is. a rope. So I'm gonna take my my necklacey thing off, and I'm gonna wrap it around him, and I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold on. So I'm holding hands with the sheep. 
As the sojourners travel on through the swamp, it takes days, in fact, to get to Mulgren's lair. Brother Dogoth, having been there before, you guide the party. And on the first day of travel, um, do you encounter anything of danger? That is a straight yes, you do. On this first day, you battle through the swamp and stumble upon a giant wasp nest. It stands directly in the path between two trees that you must cross. These giant wasps at the time appear docile, yet you know that their paralyzing venom can leave you sick and injured for days. These giant wasps appear about the size of a uh, three-foot person, small child, yet very large for a bug. With the wasps ahead of you between the path, the swamp all around you, how would Brother Dogoth lead the party safely through this challenge? How big did you say they were? They're about three feet tall, so oh, small okay. child buzzing around. How many? There are four wow. that you can see. And then a large nest that is kind of hanging like a mistletoe between these two trees in which you must cross through. Uh, to the left and the right is, of course, uncharted swampland territory full of briars and brambles and bogs. This is the clearest path through, albeit the most dangerous one. Um, can I try to calm them? How would you do so? I'm going to go try to talk to them. Brother you... Dogoth, Brother Dogoth, you leave your party a few paces behind you and you slowly approach the wasp nest. You can hear their buzzing and their humming getting closer. How do you proceed? Um, I'm going to start uh, doing a very calming low hum. Hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to lull them uh, hypnotize them sleep. this elderly oh, yeah. yeah this monk starts to become yeah. one with nature and issue out this calming hum something that you read about in a chant and you're peacefully communicating with these wasps that is going to be I'm going to say that you're using your senses, so a wisdom check. 12 or higher. 14. Ah, Brother Dogoth, these wasps are docile, and you feel the safety that your party can pass through undisturbed. How do you progress? Um, I'm going to walk past them and... Come on, guys. It's okay. They're sleeping. Gotta go. Gotta go. Muskrat, you progress. Kazuka? I follow. Who's in front of me? Muskrat. Me. I follow. Besh? Yeah. I... Besh holding up the rear. How do you progress? I confidently walk forward. And Brother Dogoth closes the gap and you pass through. The wasps are calm. On the second day of travel, you march through the swamp and you have a small moment where you are taking a rest. And the the peace of the swamp is all around you, yet you still smell that acrid, acidic chemical smell that lingers from Mulgren's destruction. One of you, let's see, Kazuka, you have a pleasant taste. What might that be? A taste in your mouth, like a something that Kazuka enjoys as you're sitting around this campfire. Beer. Knocking back a cold one. Oh, I mean, beer on me, I'm on an adventure. I got a taste <laughs> in my mouth. Muskrat, you have a very good feeling about this, about this day. How do you express that? I am singing a song. There once was a lady who had a sweet baby who sat by the campfire and I'm just singing. I'm just singing, just very calm and just enjoying the moment. 
um, because it's been such a good day and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not like worried about anything in this moment. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. And then, and then I tell Kazuka, Kazuka, sing with me. There once was a lady who there had a sweet was... baby who sat by the campfire and <laughs> ate. Most Greg, I've told you time and again. I do not have a singing voice. But you have all the words. I don't have the words. How about... I just got one verse. <laughs> How about if you write the words and she sings it? Oh, well, it's okay. Oh, but do you have a good story? I don't know. I'm having a good time, so I'm, I'm bantering with my group. So I'm in good spirits. That's what I'm, I'm concerned doing. that we've lost a sense of our urgency are you are you are you worried i am worried we have if you're singing this is a, a where are we we're on the dragon's den almost and we're here sipping beer and singing songs what in the world are we doing there's a spell been upon us i need to get to this dragon well stop drinking the beer then Stop drinking the beer. You're the one drinking the beer, and I'll I stop know I'm... singing the songs. I mean, you ruined the moment. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> we have, there is time for singing. There is time sing? for Mary Fesh. Okay, I'm sorry. Fesh, you have a pleasant sight. What does is, what is Fesh see? Well, at the moment, I am very much enjoying muskrat singing and this beautiful moment that we are all connected to one another and keeping our spirits high i think that's important to draw all the good energy towards us but brother dogoth you smell something unpleasant what is it that breaks up this mood it's uh it's kind of like a a skunk of the swamp like a muskrat, kind of. Oh, sorry. You're so rude. I smell amazing, don't I? Ben? There, there, there's a, a kind of a large population shortly ahead. I, I think I forgot to tell you that. Yeah, I was what? having fun just resting. What? No, what? That dragon's been there like 80 years. I don't know that there's a hurry. But like you said, it, I smell bad. No. no, no, those swamp creatures smell bad. Man, <laughs> they got like. But what do they look like? Are they bad? Do we need to be worried about these these swamp creaturey things? Brother Dogoth, you know that these large skunks stand up on their hind legs, and not only do they spray their victims, but they spray their victims and then track them through the swamp little by little, never letting them rest until finally their prey is worn down from running and then they eat them. Hey, why don't we let them spray the sheep and then we maybe give the, the sheep Maybe the, the dragon won't like that smell though, because if the dragon liked it, there would be no swamp things. He would have eaten them. And so we can't, we shouldn't do that. That's a bad idea. We need the sheep. Maybe but, we can, um, what if we just set the swamp on fire? Oh, wow. <laughs> Maybe then they'll run away. Yeah, but it's all wet here. You can't set that on fire. I don't know. Are you man, a dragon this, this is... in disguise? Because you're talking dragon stuff right now, and you must be a dragon in disguise wanting to set the swamp on fire. That's crazy talk. Mm. Who are you? Actually, I thought that was a good Brother idea. Brother Dogath. I told you my name, right? Yes. I'm okay. really concerned. As you oh. should be. We're oh. not setting the swamp on fire. Things live here. That's not nice. I would like things live here. I would like everyone to roll a wisdom check. The highest number is the winner. Hi, I got a 20. Okay. Of course you did. Eight. Oh, don't ask what I got. Eight from Fesh Kazuka. What'd you get? 
You get a one? Really? Man, what is wrong with your dice? That's like. Oh, I did the red one again! All right, so, okay, that's bad for Kazuka. Brother Doga. Get your bad dice. They are my. <laughs> All right, Brother Doga, what'd you get? 12. Okay, so. The highest number is the winner. Just wanted to see who was the most alert at that moment. Ironically, it's Muskrat who is shouting at the top of her lungs in the middle of the swamp. <laughs> Kazuka, you are the one to suffer it because you are the least aware in which you rolled a one, um, which I'm going to really grind it to the worst possible outcome because that's the lowest number you can roll. Thesh and Brother Dogoth will let you stay in the middle. So at that point, as Brother Dogoth smelled the skunk, the skunk has approached. But it's not a skunk. An arrow flies through the air, striking Kazuka. But Muskrat, you notice it at the time. These horrible cannibalistic orcs, foul beings of reptilian skin and pig nose snouts, wearing skunk body armor, like wearing skunk's skin and their their scent. They've smeared themselves in these skunk sacks trying to ambush you, in which they have. But Muskrat, you get to do one thing ahead of everyone else because your senses just kick in really quick. Nevertheless, I'm going to see if uh, Kazuka, how badly he is injured with this horrible arrow. A d8 I roll. Um, everyone has 10 hit points. Eight on the die. Wow, Kazuka, this is a near fatal wound as the arrow strikes into your gut. <sighs> Muskrat, you get to act before anyone else. Okay. You so, you see that you're surrounded by at least two of these orcs. Yes. How close am I to them? You are within moving distance, so you could run up to them or you can okay. run away from them. Okay, so I'm going to, because we're around the campfire, Mm-hmm. I'm going to grab for one of the um, sticks that are in the fire. Like the one, there's like one that's got a little bit that's not burned at the end. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just sling it towards the skunks, the skunk people, I'm gonna call them skunk people, mm -hmm. orcs, whatever they are. And I'm just in the, it's just gonna spray the fire like all across the whole area because it's going to disturb the campfire and it's just going to like and i'm just going to hurl it at them in that in that moment um with the hopes that like all the oils from the skunk stuff is going to like ignite my hopes <laughs> very good roll a dexterity check 12 or higher 13. that is a success but only on one one of the orcs is damaged since you used a tool you're going to roll a d6. Okay. Each of these orcs has five hit points. Okay. How many orcs? Two so far. I got a five. Five on the dice. Yes, you spray and it burns his eyes. He actually trips and falls to protect himself and lands on an upturned root. Sticks straight through him. He lies there dead. Of course, his partner is on, is definitely eyeballing you, pointing and grunting. Uh, next up in the initiative, I think would be Brother Dogoth. You got a 12, right? Yes. Okay, Brother Dogoth, you got a 12. So how do you respond to this challenge? I'm going to tell Muskrat, I told you fire was the best thing to, to attack him with. I'm going to, I'm going to, well, walk or run over to Kazuka and use healing hands. Is that is a spell that, that Brother Dogoth knows. Uh, you call upon the power of the clover blade. You lay your hands on him in that area and try to cauterize the wound. You will roll a wisdom check. Do not roll a one and disturb the balance of energia. Me? No, Brother Dogoth. Okay, good. 12 or higher? Uh, 20. Not 20? that. 18 20. Plus 10. A 20 is successful. You call upon the power of energia. Roll a d10 to give him that much health back. Five. A five. With a five, he's able to remove the arrow and give you five health back. Okay, that puts me at seven. Fantastic. Okay. You are ushered away from death's door. Um, Brother Dogoth and Kazuka are standing next to each other, yet Fesh, still near the campfire. It is your turn. 
Yes, I would like to use my arcane bomb towards them with my spell. Arcane bomb? Oh, well, I don't know. I have something called arcane bomb here. That's awesome. That sounds great. Uh, roll a... You are an arcanist, so you use your intelligence to cast these spells. So roll an intelligence check, 12 or higher. Like I said, do not roll a 1. 11. Oh. Uh, and plus 3. Oh, good. So. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, fortune. Six, success. You roll an art. You throw this, like, hurl this energy. I would like you to describe maybe how this magic looks as you cast it towards the evil orc. Okay, yeah, so I feel an energy coming from within me that I carry outwards and extend towards them and hurl it at them. And it creates a blast of air. Very cool. Since you used magic, you'll roll a d10. That kind of looks like the top. I don't know if you can see that. The 10 sided dice. That should be a, a zero stands for 10. Seven zero? Seven zero. That's seven points. As I said, they had five hit points. So you cast this arcane energy and it sinks deep into its body and then, like a bug on the windshield, the orc splatters. A stink of skunk is everywhere now. The question is, were they alone? And that is a yes, they were. And out of the one that explodes, Fesh, you see that he drops a key from his belt and it starts to sink into the mud along with everything else in this orc. It slowly sinks into the ground and will disappear within four turns. It's sinking very slowly. Hazuka. Hmm. It is your turn. Go get it. All right. You have to get a dexterity check 12 or higher to pull it out of the mud. Blue. Blue. Okay. <laughs> uh, does nine work? Nine plus your dexterity? I got I got strength modifier. I don't get it. All right. You are fumbling through it, and the key is starting to slip. You know how you grab something, and you actually push it deeper into the mud? Your hand no. is reaching blindly into it. So Muskrat, it is your turn. I'm going to try to grab for the key as well. All right. Uh, with his help, it's going to be a little bit easier as he's already tried to get a bearing. So you have to roll a nine or higher. A nine? Okay. Yeah. I got an 11 and my dexterity is a two. Oh, you are successful and you can reach out and you have the key, Muskrat. Look, I got a key. I got a key, but it stinks. It smells. <laughs> You're really good at finding things, aren't you? I mean... She actually is. What I do. I mean, it is what I do. So I'm going to take the key and I'm going to stick it in my in my pocket right up here. Wash it off first, right? No, I don't. It's, it's part of nature. <laughs> you should clean it off on the sheep hair. I was thinking you're going to wash it first. No, I'm not. <laughs> It's gonna let it be. Well, you can just stand so, there, right? Yes, I'm taking care of the sheep. How is the sheep? Is the sheep okay? Sheep's sheep is okay. Good. We're feeding it. Sheep is good. Bob is good. Bob made it. All right. Are you so, carrying Bob? Who's carrying? Is Bob? No, Bob I'm is. holding hands with Bob. He's got the other end of my necklace that's got dried hands on it. All right. I'm holding hands with Bob. I think the um. The skunk orcs probably wanted to eat Bob. <gasps> I don't think humans taste good. That's so Not terrible. Bob, he didn't do anything. Well, we need Bob. I don't think we should stay here. I think we should move on because this is not a very good place. And it smells now. I don't really want to be here. Before we leave this area, the one orc went into a he, he's plunder he's got something impaled he's on the root he's stuck on the root yes but his cloak of skunk can be acquired yes Ooh, you want that i, I want to drag it, it behind me i don't want it near me I mean, we could we could definitely procure this let me let me go get it for you let me go Please? get it i will get it for you i'm okay. gonna go over and i'm going to like See how I think attached. we could use that. Pull that off. Must see what I, there is it like yes. is it really big and heavy? 
Uh, it is a large creature, so it's about a seven foot tall creature. I mean, I'll drag it because you're. I got the strength to pull I mean, it. Yeah, just, I got the sheep. You know, I can't. I can't. Just put it on the bomb. Put it on top no, of we're the not this gun on Bob. No, remember what I said? Bob needs to smell like Bob and not like skunk. Because, yeah. We can smell like uh, skunk. Did, Maybe does, it'll be good anybody, for us later. Does anybody have like a, uh, like a pouch or something to put this skunk cloak in? Yes. Nothing that I... I not that not big. I have, a, I have a, an actual <laughs> rope that we could we could wrap around it and like secure well, it and then yeah, drag it. Yeah, because I'm going to carry it. Yeah, I'm going to drag it behind me. Okay, then I will I allow you to use my rope as we just bundle it all up and then you can you can you can do that. So I have okay. my actual rope and I'm going to let you do that. So you have my rope now. I'm wondering what this key is for. It that smells the orc was carrying. Besh, I would like you to make an intelligence check, nine or higher, to see if you know what it used. Three plus three, six. Unfortunately, it looks very generic, so you don't have a point mm. to read on it. Uh, but you do know that these orcs were most likely servants of Mulgren that were patrolling mm. the area. It might go to somewhere in the castle, yes. Right. Maybe, maybe. I would also like to give a hero coin to Brother Dogoth for doing a great job at playing dense because it is very painful to play a dense character, and I think Roger's doing a good job. He's doing great. <laughs> I love it. It's perfect for him. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Only I can say that because I'm yes. married to him. <laughs> so everybody, <laughs> everybody always called my dad's name is Dennis. And everybody always called him Uncle Densis. <laughs> you are doing this so much justice. <laughs> Very good. On the third day of travel, you move through the swamp, and as you, <clears throat> and as the fog and smog starts to grow thicker and thicker, you notice it's getting harder to see in the distance. Nevertheless, when you arrive to the clearing, your feet are sloshing through the mucky bog and water. You're struggling to maintain your balance for those of you that don't have the shoes. And then you see it. The ruined castle of Lord and Lady Baltimore standing out of the swamp. And yet, in the history books, it always looks taller for now. The second level is eye level with the swamp water. And you can only assume that levels one and the basement have slowly sunken over time into the mucky water below. The towers have crumbled and torn, maybe nearly even ripped out. The main drawbridge has been chewed and bitten through so that this large castle looks even like entering into the mouth of a dragon. As your heart pounds Closer and closer you get to this lair. You squat between brush and bramble, hiding behind the fog that thinly veils this castle. You hear the low snore of Mulgren the Black Dragon. Muskrat, as your eyes peer through this fog, what do you pay attention to and do you have any questions about this situation? Um, yes, like we're 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 finding the terrain more difficult at this point. Yes. And so I've picked up the sheep and I'm making my way carrying the sheep. And um my my I'm I'm trying to pay attention to like the the area around us as we're going through because now we've already been set upon by orcs. So obviously they must have or, like um, patrols going on. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to see if there's any kind of um, uh, out of like just looks unusual that might notify me that, that that's something I need to pay attention to. Like there may be another patrol coming or a sound, just something on the trail. I'm not really paying attention so much to the, the castle in the the background because I'm paying more attention to what is like in our range right where we're at to muskrat and say um 
I'll hold Bob for you. I'm pretty strong. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Here, yeah, you can have him. He's heavy. Thank you. He'll be don't, okay. Don't let him die, though. We need him. <clears throat> when I killed the farmer, I'd give him back. So that's important. <laughs> what are the orcs doing? Jen, if you would roll a d6. Three. You do see that there are two orcs. Looks like they should be keeping watch. But instead, one of them is playing tag with the other, laughing and torturing this poor runt of an orc. And he has what looks like a magic wand, crackling this lightning energy. He's laughing and... In fact, there are yet two tor- two orc bullies bullying this smaller runt of an orc. And they're just zapping him against the corner, making him run, chasing after him, then zapping him again, laughing and taunting, grunting in this horrible, hideous language. How far away are they? I'm going to say they are very far. They are across the swamp, so it would take a good two dice rolls to get to them build the scene so brother dogoth what are you paying attention to and do you have any questions about this scene and keep in mind that everything that i previously described also applies to you as well did you say there was a lord and lady ancient history says eight years ago yes lord and lady baltimore were consumed in a night by mulgren as he sacrificed them to terrorize this countryside right before he laid waste to their region of firewater I don't like bullies. How far away are they? They are two dice rolls. You'd have to get through the muck in the swamp to arrive to get within arm's reach of them. Uh, If you were to throw something at them, you would have to do just one dice roll to get close to them. Yeah. Hey guys, let's go. Let's go save the baby orc. Bullies are bad. He could tell us how to get into. Yeah. We, we, he, he could be, you know, he doesn't like it. Kids maybe maybe he could help us. He could help us. No, you know, because he's probably from the castle. If we help him, maybe he'll help us because he's miserable. Because if it was me, I'd be miserable. You know? mm-hmm. And Fesh, what do you pay attention to? And do you have any questions to clarify this situation? I'm wondering if they will definitely see us coming or if it's possible to sneak past them. It is possible to sneak past them. You could wade through the water. You could avoid the various pit traps and bogs, possibly alligators and stranglers lurking in the swamp. Um, You could uh, go quietly through the swamp to avoid making noise. Yes, you could. Okay, I'm thinking that might be a good option while they're distracted right now. Kazuka, what are you paying attention to? And do you have any questions to clarify? Um, yes, and so I need to tell my teammates, um, I'm thinking, uh, as a very strong, because I've got a five of my modifier and strength, and so I'm thinking I look a lot like, uh, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Nice. <laughs> as, nice. A sta- <laughs> as a standard go-to. Yes. Um, so, big, strong, powerful, and I write, po- well, I don't even write, I, I write history now, I write stories, but... I carry a, sh- a, sh- a shield, and I've got a spear, and now I've just donned a skunk cloak. You could look like an orc. I look like an orc. I look you like look- one of them. <laughs> but to save all of you from the smell, I will not be near you. Thank you. Because it might grotesque you. So I'll always be like at a, at least a 10 foot distance. Nice. But within hearing range, um, would you like? I'm thinking I'm going to need Fesh's help. Would you like me to go? Because two big orcs is trouble. Mm. I could go rescue this one little orc. I'll go with Game you. Master, the Game Master doesn't think so. He looks- no, does Kazuka look convincing enough? Kazuka, as you don this skunk robe and given your size, you, you do appear more on the orcish size as far as being big, although some orcs are scrawny. Uh, go ahead and make a intelligence check 
I'm going to lower it to 12 or higher because you use the skunk robe. And, okay. So this, is just me- this is just measuring your ability to disguise yourself. You look okay. at it. You don't got it. Man. 10. Okay. 10. okay. And I've got no modifier. Yeah, no modifier. So what this means is it's close, but hardly convincing and might require some modifications in order to to be convincing. I could have role play it. Well, just Can I could I go and like rub mud all over his face and like try to make him look maybe not so much humanesque, you know? Like I'm maybe I some have some fangs. size and stuff in my bag that I can pull out that maybe I can wrap around his neck or his like just something to like maybe help him in his disguise. So I like my orcs gross. Um, it's going to need a little bit more than mud. So what kind of mud? Like there's some slugs mm-hmm. that are not too far. And I'm thinking I'm going to squish those things up mm-hmm. and I'm going to rub them all over around the, the scarf neck. So it's kind of slimy and gross. Mm-hmm. And the mud, it's got a stink to it, and it dries into this greenish brown, um, like things. And there's some moss around, so maybe I can pull that up and tuck it in to make him look more like bulky, like mm-hmm. on his shoulders. And then I'm gonna rub like the slug stuff on his arms, so it because it leaves like this tint of like this reddish green tint on his hands and his arms. And it's like a, it's it's definitely not pretty That's better. so you're giving him shoulder pads is what i'm hearing i am totally with the moss i am packing him down with All right. <laughs> well the slug slime and the acrid the acrid swamp water is very hard to handle so kazuka i do need you to make a constitution check or take damage to add to this 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 disguise and it is very convincing but are you able to power through this stench um, 12 or higher, please. I got a one modifier. All right. 13. Ro- yeah. All right. <laughs> my first winning <laughs> roll today. Well, you, you did you, it. You, 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 uh, you saved yourself from losing three hit points. But yes, with the slug, you just power through. Well, that you were able to withstand the stench and the slime and the poison of this horrible swamp. And yes, you do. You can pass off as an orc at this time. Nice. Can Good I go with him? Muskrat. Can I can I go with him? But I'm like in stealthy, so he's not by himself when he goes over to the orcs. Like you intend can... you in, tell me what you intend to do. Well, he's gonna go, and he's acting like an orc, and mm-hmm. maybe I'm trailing behind him, very stealthy, kind of like hiding, so I'm not, I'm not as noticeable because if they look back, they're just gonna see him more so than they would see me. Okay. So I'm using the 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 swamp areas, the stuck up branches, mm-hmm. the trees that have died, you know, mounds of different things, debris, in order to like kind of make my way around. Um, so that I can go and when he's there, when he's there, I'll be close so I can assist him. Besh, how would you contribute to this challenge? Well, I wanted to check in with what the plan is exactly. So I need them we... all to hide. I need to go there. The plan is I need to tell them that two dead orcs are back there because we just killed them. And so they need to go check on them. So mm-hmm. I need to all, well, it must crack ones. You want to follow me for whatever reason, but y'all need to hide. That's the plan because I need to get those two big guys out of. Okay, so Brother so and I should hide while they run past us. Yeah, you need. It isn't the tower thing? Did you have the? Y'all have the? You have the sheep. I have Bob. Oh. Have Bob. Still holding. Bob. It might be. It might be tough to hide. With Bob. Mass. Mass. Oh, no, man. Well, but if we get rid of the two orcs and we just have the little orc, then we can maybe, because we've done this good thing to this little orc, he'll help us get into the castle. So our goal is to put these two big orcs down so that we can utilize the little orc to get into the castle. 
That's mm. that's the plan. Well, I thought I was going to tell them to get find the the two that were on patrol. Oh, the two that SDI. died. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. A better they idea. need to go find them because they're they didn't report to me. Yes. Okay, that's a better idea. Okay, that's that was my. Plan. That was I my was plan. confused by so, your plan. So, with that plan, Fesh, how would you contribute? And then Brother Dogoff. I'm still unsure about how we're going to hide. Are you planning to go with them, Kazuko? No, I'm the, you... I'm going to act as their commander coming back yeah. from patrol and we lost two. So somebody is okay. patrol so like there's an enemy which is us. There's an enemy out here in the mud in the okay. mud and they need to go okay. find the two that are lost that didn't report to me. Right. That was so totally, that was totally I my think plan. that we can we can proceed with the attempting to hide with Bob, but be prepared for just in case. I can, um, like, summon elements, so maybe I can summon the earth to kind of make, like, a rock or some sort of wall to hide us behind. Mm. I like that. Idea. Yeah. Okay. With that power. And so you prepare, Kazuka, you are, role, you are intending to roleplay as... The orc that was killed by you or no i'm the commander that just came back from patrol that i lost my two comrades what so there are two, two orcs that you, there are two orcs that you killed on patrol no, we did yeah we did because okay. one was impaled and one was blown up but they don't know that there was no a, yeah but i need to tell them they didn't so. report to me gotcha. yeah so i'm sending the two big ones to go find them gotcha oh, okay that's a good idea. all right Kazuka, you brazenly walk as an orc through the swamp, proudly role-playing as the commanding orc. Yes. Muskrat, you run flank, sneaking through the swamp with your shoes, keeping from... Um, and you are stepping through and you catch a few places where the quicksand starts to sink. Uh, Kazuka, She's are you... Got yeah, Kazuka, do you, got shoes? Shoes. do you have shoes? Do you have shoes? No. I can't. That would look maybe look stupid. It I would. See. Yes. Let's <laughs> hope you. Let's hope you avoid the quicksand. <laughs> Best. Can I see the quicksand? Can I know? Can I show can, it? Can I like tell him when it's coming up? No, I don't know no, if I can or not. Cannot. No. <laughs> Bad Kazuka. Sorry. <laughs> Besh, Besh and brother Dogoth, you crouch together like two children playing hide and seek close by. Okay, and the and the together with, with and Bob. Bob and Bob pushing right. up against. Brother Dogoth and Fesh, you are attempting to move quietly through the swamp and remain hidden. So, Brother Dogoth, first cast your spell. It'll be a wisdom check. Uh, 15 or higher, please. Ooh. Hmm. 16. The earth <laughs> yeah. obeys your command. And Fesh, you watch as the ground begins to form like a mud hut and then sprouts grass and ferns safely around you and then leaves a little slit like a foxhole in which you may peer into the distance and see the shadow of the castle. You are very well hidden. Nice. Uh, this is Fesh, with that, good with, work, with, yeah, Brother yeah, Absolutely, mm -hmm. with, that roll, with that roll, you do not have to roll as well. So you are under the protection of the spell. Muskrat, you need to make a dexterity check. Uh, because you have your shoes, I'll give you some advantage, so 12 or higher. 16. You stealthily move through the fern. This is going off splendidly. Muskrat, I need your force of will, so I'm asking you to make a charisma check to see how convincing you can be. But we'll do that after you speak to the orcs. So as you okay. approach them, they do notice you. One of them smacks Kazuka, well, Kazuka, they notice you, one smacks the other on our shoulder and points and grunts. <laughs> they begin to grunt in their guttural language. They stop the wand and stomp on the chest of the runt orc. And the orc, they both pull like these crude, rusty scimitars out of their belts. And they grunt towards you in orcish language. The question is, <laughs> does Kazuka that. speak orcish? This horrible, yeah. horrible language. Yes, I would, I would say he speaks it brokenly, and yeah. um, you probably I forgot know, about that. You know, <laughs> oh, I'm planning. I forgot I mean, about that. There are very limited resources of books that study this horrible language, and most likely you know all just the swear words. 
and um, where the can bathroom I, is. Can I roll on that? <laughs> um, I will. I am a, I, I'm a historian. Well, uh, yes, you are. So I will, I'll so give you. So I am lore, and I usually study something mm -hmm. like a, a community. Yeah. Before I go there. Yeah. And so I, I should have some knowledge of this stuff even before I spoke with Iris. All right. I was just um, really. Just so, making an. Let's see how much you know. Intelligence check twelve or higher. Okay. Because you're a historian. Yes, that is true. Maybe you know a story you can steal lines from to tell them. <laughs> that would work. <laughs> yes, you did it. Yes. You did it. You did it. Nope. No, you What'd didn't. You I went the other way with it. What'd you got? Oh, oh my one? God. What's wrong? <laughs> All even, right. on my, even on my blue dice. That's amazing. So, Kazuka, no, it's not. I, that's... The, the way this goes Wait. down... Kazuka, you're just going to have to improvise like you realize as soon as they start speaking, it does dawn on you at that moment. They don't speak English. Your throw box is broken. <laughs> so, you, no, no go-karting, Jen. <laughs> Sorry. Are you ready? All right, Kazuka, how do you respond? Uh, well, are they... What's the distance? Because I'm going to uh, play this out. I would say you're a good 15 feet away, and they, they're they standing up on the hill of the castle where you're kind of still in the swamp water below, so 15 feet distance. I, okay, I'm, I'm, I've, I've given up walking. I'm char well, because my goal now is now the charge, take one down, because I'm going to do that. Because I just forgot that I don't speak orc. I love it. So, <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? So, I keep on in the commanding way that I was going. Whoever's not, so you said one was kind of putting their foot down or holding the small one runt down. So, I'm going to the other one. Okay. And because he's not knowing what I'm going there for, although he does know I'm his commanding officer. So he's kind of not sure what I'm trying to do. I, I'd say there's a little bit of hesitation. Confusion? Yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. I speak. So I go up there and I, right there. And I've got the power to insult regardless of language. That's true. <laughs> so I insult. Speak, I do. It's hurl insult. It's actually my gift. Okay. Hurl That's insult. why I love this character so much. Okay. I like it. I'm going to hurl the most frustrating of whatever language. Do I know any other language besides English? Well, that's the thing about this magical language. With this spell, you can actually uh -huh. utter that insult in this orcish language. Bam! Uh, Roll to cast it. That's going to be your intelligence check. You, you got to get it. 15 or higher. You can do it. You can do or, it. Or actually, charisma. I'm sorry, charisma for you, right? You have I a got no modifier either. Okay. 12. 15. 15. Oh. Nine. I get a 9. A 9. Okay. Oh, mm. no. <laughs> you do call out the insult. Um, but he's on to you as quick as he can, and he takes a spear out of the ground, and he's going to chuck it at you at the same time. He's going to hurl an insult back, but simultaneously you're both going to deal damage. So you roll a d10, and he gets to roll a d6. You ready? I got my, wait, my d10? D10. Okay. All right. So got it, okay. You got it. What'd you get? Six. Six. He got a two. So the spear grazes your shoulder. You duck in the last second. You take two points of damage, but with six... You shatter his mind, he collapses over and falls to the ground into the swamp water. The other one stares bug-eyed. The jig is up. Muskrat, it's your turn. Was that the one that had the 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 wand? Uh no. The one had the wand. Nope. Is it the other guy? The other one. Okay, has so the wand. I'm still hidden. Like mm -hmm. yep. so he can't see me. Correct. So I so I want to catch him by surprise and I want to hurl my dagger at his head try to grab his eyeball out of his face Ten, uh, 15 or higher please okay. dexterity check and you throw right. it Sixteen. wow 
Great rolls, guys. Sunk. All right, it's a d6 of damage. He's got five hit points. Can it be a kill shot? Six! <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, the dagger we just goes. It. We killed it! Yeah, two hits. Bam, bam. Both orcs drop to the ground. The wand is still clutched in him. The runt orc. Uh, is definitely scrambling for his life, believes the castle is under attack, and he is at risk of calling the alarm. Thesh, it is your turn. Um, you're a good distance away, but not within, I mean, you're still within sprinting distance, okay? So, how do you hmm. proceed? Well, I talk to Brother Dogath and let him know. It looks like uh, the jig is up and we need to get in on the action now. So we should probably make our way over to help our group. Okay. So am I able to move? Am I stuck? Uh, you're able to move. Um, I just, what do you intend to do? And I'll let you know how difficult that is. Uh, I would like to go help and assist Kazuka and Muskrat. How? Now that they've... It's a system with what? I, well, I'm nervous about uh, the young orc looking kind of startled and worried yep. he might call other orcs. That's I anticipate exactly. that they might need our assistance okay. nearby. So you're just basically, sh you're arriving at their side is what you want to do. Just, yeah, I feel okay. like our, our former enough. plan is no longer. Gotcha. Okay, so not super difficult then. It's just going to be a 12 or higher strength or dexterity check to wade through the mud and get there on time. Do what? My rolls today. Seven. Seven plus strength or dexterity? Nope, just five okay. plus two. All right. All right, yeah. So, Fesh, you are, but you get snarled a little bit. You have these tangling vines, and then you start to get stuck a little bit in the quicksand. It takes you a while to, like, pull your feet up. Nevertheless, by the end of the turn, you're able to arrive, just unable to do anything else. But Brother Dogoth, um, with the sheep in your hand, um, Fesh already leaving the post, how do you proceed? Um, I guess I'll come out of cover and uh, is my work a beast? Can I try to call him beast again? No, not a beast, unfortunately. I'm just going to hold Bob and say, hey little orc, do you want a sheep? You want to take a pony ride on a sheep? I'll give it to you. That's going to be a little difficult as you hold up this sheep to convince this orc uh, who just saw two of his companions, albeit bully companions, dead. Uh, I'm going to crank it up to an 18. Um, what's your highest stat? Wisdom? Strength. Strength? I'll give you, I'll give, I'll make it a strength check. It's got to be an 18 or higher. Oh, you can do it, babe. I know. Ooh, nope. <laughs> well, five. All right. So as you hold up the sheep, you actually just start to sink and sink and sink, and you feel yourself going down underneath the weight of the sheep. It is, for lack of a, is lackluster in performance, which means at this round he is going to call for his allies. Sorry. In in one round, the orcs will arrive. And what he does is he begins to bark almost like a velociraptor, like burr, 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 as he's belching and panic and fear, sounding forth the alarm. Um, not enough to wake the dragon. As your heart stops for a minute, you hear the snoring still progressing, but you start to hear footsteps and return barks. It does seem at the base of this castle, this entrance in front of this large gaping hole in the castle, it seems as if you're about to have visitors, but it is now Kazuka's turn. Do I see anybody? They are coming. They'll be here at Who's the- they? Uh, well, whoever he is calling, they will be here um, at the bottom of Brother Dogoth's turn. So is there an, an assumed entry point that they're gonna come? Yep, so if, I mean, if you can imagine in place of a large gate and drawbridge, it's just this blown out hole uh, revealing a large um, entryway into the castle. So they'll probably come from that entrance. Then that's where I'm going. Okay. You're going to go towards... Because I'm going to block this entry. Cause... Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. Very good. Um, PhD, <laughs> Yeah. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna basically block the orcs from 
exiting. And I'm gonna. Can I, is it? Do I have a running ability that like to, to make sure that I, I get there before they get oh, yeah. out? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I have to sprint over there? That's me okay. a strength check, fifteen or higher. Can you stop doing this? Because you know I don't. I gotta get new dice. I'm buying new dice. I'm gonna get dressed yes. and mail them to you. The red and the blue ain't working. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Strength. Strength. I get a five modifier. I need a ten. You said right. fifteen, right? The rock. Go for it. Go. <laughs> You got it. 12 plus 5. <gasps> nice. Yep, you are quite the formidable force in this entryway. Uh, Muskrat, you are close by. Yes. Um, I'm going to get the wand. Because I feel like that would be an excellent idea. It is yours. And um, I'm going to trip the orc. Because I'm gonna like, you kid, you're <laughs> in trouble. <laughs> Just gonna like kick him down and be like, "You're in trouble! You're in so much trouble!" And then I'm going to go towards where Kazuka is because he can't do it by himself. So. All right, roll a 15 or higher dexterity check. Trip this orc. Is Kazuka inside? Yeah, he's inside. Okay. And what what kind of check is it? Dexterity. Oh my gosh! I got just at a 15. He stumbles, falls headlong into the swamp, smacks his head against a rock, and is unconscious. Yes. Deserve that. (laughs) Besh, you are pulling yourself up. You arrive at the entrance of this large castle. And again, it's a large blown out hole in the entryway. So it's, there's beams and barriers and rubble that's kind of providing as a natural wall or unnatural wall. But then there's a bottleneck entryway in which Kazuga and Muskrat have entered into. How do you proceed? Well, I was planning on uh, taking care of a little orc with pushing him into a hole or something, but Muskrat has taken care of that, luckily, as soon as I got there. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I will attempt to proceed inside as well to offer my assistance. Well, having not not done anything, your live body is able to arrive, and yet you still have the ability to do something when you do arrive. When you arrive into the entrance, Fesh, you are the first to witness, even though everyone else is there, you can see that there are five mounds of treasure in this room. Thousands of coins, artifacts, things that have been taxed and extorted from the people of Tetherna, holding them hostage to the wrath of this dragon. The question is, is the book in this room? Um, I'm going to make a secret check, and then I want you to roll a wisdom check to see if Fesh can see it. Mm-hmm. It's a 15 okay. or higher to notice it, although Fesh would assume that it might be in here. So, right. But do you see it? Which, what kind of check was it? Wisdom. So 13. Okay. I've asked the Oracle the question, is the book in this room? I have my answer but you do not see it at this time, although it could be here. So Mm. it remains a mystery. Um, You also see, if you would roll a D8, Fesh, this is something you do see in your search. Thanks. Uh, There is a large golden dog whistle that is hanging off a golden statue of a woman, and she's got her hand outstretched, and the whistle is just kind of dangling from her fingertips. It does look arcane and kind of like in the way we can always tell if something has a lithium battery or is electronic. You just know that is an arcane item. Besh, Kazuka, and Muskrat are there. Brother Dogoth, you are pulling yourself up from the swamp waters still with Bob in your hand. How do you proceed? So we need Bob. (laughs) We need Bob. Do we bring him in or should I just tie him on a branch out here? What would Dogoth do? I'm going to try to hide him. I, uh, is there like cover that I could hide him behind? Yeah, there's plenty of rocks and rubble and uh, little, even small caverns. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to put him somewhere uh, hidden. And I'm going to tie his leash up to a rock. Mm-hmm. Or, or, if, if, you, if you wish, Brother Dogoth also sees a rickety rowboat that is gently floating on the swamp water's edge, and there's a canvas that is overlaying the rowboat. Okay, I can tie that up to the shore. 
But I'm going to use Calm Beast on him. Roll to cast. Um, it's going to be, since there's really no challenge, just don't roll a one. Two or higher. Bob's my friend. Yeah. 13. Yeah, easy enough. No problem there. He is calm. The sheep begins to go to sleep. Counting sheep. <laughs> but when you hide him, uh, you find something underneath the canvas. If you would roll a d8 for me, please. Seven. <laughs> you find a corked bottle of a purple liquid. It seems to have gone missing, or it seems to have gone unnoticed, and it says ambrosia. Now, uh, this is a very expensive draught of healing power. Okay. Now, the, the sheep going to sleep. Brother Dogoth, you join them, and of course, like I said, the orcs begin to pour forth through this first treasure room. There are four of them. They're alert, they're vicious, and they are going to make their attack. But because Kazuka is bar barricading the way, Kazuka, you get to go first. I was about to say, I haven't. I don't want a medic game, but I was there first. You are, indeed. Okay, got it. Um, and then ultimate, it's the ultimate. If you well, in the unlikely case that you roll finally a natural twenty, Keith, <laughs> you get to add that ultimate score to your dice roll. I appreciate that pun. <laughs> when <Okay>. it happens. <laughs> but are you ready? Yeah, Kazuka. I want to say that as you stand into this room, oh, we're going to call it room number two. You see that it goes upstairs to room three and downstairs to room one. You can assume downstairs to room one is the basement or the dungeon that is underwater. And room three seems to lead towards the king's chambers. But the interesting thing about room number three above you is there is a, also a dragon-sized hole in the ceiling. Yeah, I, I was thinking that this thing is sinking because that dragon is pushing it mm, down by exactly. its Exactly, yes. Yeah. The weight of evil. Yeah. Well, the weight of the dragon. Exactly. And the gold. And the gold, yes. Oh, and the gold. Well, that too. But Kazuka, um, the orcs are coming towards you. How do you proceed? There's four of them, and I'm ready because <laughs> just like I did in the last adventure, I'm going to hurl insults so Go that it. it's so bad that their brain is going to pop. Pop. <laughs> All right. They become so enraged. I love this. That's why I love this feature. They become so higher. enraged. They do. Like, what? 15 or higher. On a? Uh, intelligence check. Can I kick them too? Uh, you can do it. I'm buying you dice, man. <laughs> wow! I put you to shame. I put it. It's a 20. It's a natural 20. <laughs> oh, sweet. Okay, that so finally you, happened. You have been Falling, and that's All right. It so what's, again. what's really cool about this then, you get to roll your energy dice, which is a d10, right? Ooh. You add your plus energy, which I think you said was plus three, right? And, and three, yeah. Okay, then you get to add the ultimate dice, which is the 12 cider. It looks like a dodecahedron. Wow. Yeah. And then you get to add the plus to your You got addings too many. What One at a time. Start, start with the, the original. The 10? So here's okay. the thing. Well, here's the cool thing. The the orcs have five hit points each. I'm going to allow you to roll over those points onto other enemies. Nice. Right? Like a wave. Okay. Yeah. So if you roll more than five, it spills over as you just insult the whole crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so start with a D10. Start with a D10, add that modifier. Add the three, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if it fell on the floor? Nope. Me re re no, re-roll, please. Thank you. Okay. Keep it on the table. Four. Four plus three Four is plus seven. Three. Now roll your dodecahedron. Looks like this guy. Twelve cider. Twelve, seven, eleven, ten. Nine. Okay. Eleven. Ooh! Oh, plus, your plus your modifier. Which is my ultimate. Uh huh. Two. Roger. Nice. That's, 
Uh, That's 20. 20. 20. They're all dead. Yes. <laughs> I've each. <laughs> all right, Keith, I need you to, I mean, yes. Like a rock, you stand here and these four horrible orcs, I mean, they have history of cannibalism, they have history of marauding and destroying and weakening. They all show up, they're drawing their scimitars, they're ready to take on these four heroes. But you say something and it comes out in perfect orcish. What do you say? Drop dead. <laughs> Yes! It's so like Arnold Schwarzenegger, 1980s, drop dead. <laughs> and sure enough, they just spill headlong in front of you and their bodies just collapse before Kazuka's feet sliding near him, lifeless. Muskrat. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into the room between his legs. I'm just gonna go whoop, right into the room. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm just gonna start looking around because I'm like, there's lots of books in here, guys. There's lots of stuff. We should be looking for whatever. Wait, hey, where's the sheep? Where's the sheep? Yeah, where is the sheep? Where's the sheep? Mm -hmm. Am I there? Or am yes, I... you oh. are there. Yeah. <laughs> where's, uh, where's the sheep? Where's Bob? He's on a boat. Why did you? Boat. A boat? Where did you find a boat? Just. It's over there. Oh my god. But what are we going to use now? Bob's right there until we, when we need him. Is he alive? I, I didn't want the orcs to kill Bob. Well, okay. We, I like Bob. Well, can I levitate Bob into the, into the room? You can. Well, don't be too loud. We don't want to wake up the dragon. I don't know oh, if he's awake. You may wake up the dragon if you roll a natural one. Oh my gosh, okay. But you have to be, you have to be in room number three. To roll, okay. 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 So Can we search the room for, for the book? Okay, yes, you search may. for the book. All right, muskrat. Can help me fish? Yep. All right. Um, there, are five, there are five mounds of treasure. There is a room. You are going to spend about an hour looking through this area. Okay. Muskrat, make your, in, I'm going to say wisdom check. Make a wisdom okay. check. A still okay. 15 or higher. Uh, wisdom... Hmm? 19. That is very close. You do find a book for a moment. You see it and you think this must be the book, but... It's gotta be the book. I can't read. You can't read. Okay. Fesh. <laughs> I can't read book? either. Fesh, Fesh, does this look like the book? Is this the book? I'm gonna go take it to I don't think. I don't think that's the one. But what does this one say? I can't read. Fesh, you see that this book is a uh, a collection of demonology, study mm -hmm. a grimoire, studying demons and how to socially interact with them in the oh. most mind altering ways. Wow. Oh, I'm I'm very interested in this one though. I think I'll pop this one in my satchel anyways. Did I find anything other but than let's... a book? Fesh, you do have a book of infernal social dynamics. <laughs> How to deal with the abyss. Brother uh, Fesh, you are also searching around. Uh, or please tell me what you're indicating you're doing this room. Yes, I am I spotted the golden whistle and I'm, I feel drawn towards the whistle. So I would like to go and, and grab that into my satchel as well before I continue looking and and you do recognize it uh you've heard about this thing it is a whistle of friendship you identify one specific friend and when you blow this whistle only they can hear it hmm. so as i grab it i need to uh create this connection with one friend you may oh, okay yes I, I will choose muskrat <laughs> all right we're friends now <laughs> yes, it does signal whistle. It can give off one to as many tones or as many. Um, it's like Morse code, a lot like Morse code hmm. communication. Yeah, very nice. Very cool. This could come in handy. Possibly. Yeah. Brother Dogoth, how are you engaging in this room? So we've been there a while, at least a half an hour. Seems pretty safe. Indeed. So, guys, are we going to go? Uh, we're going upstairs or downstairs? It's it's underwater. Didn't you know that? Like yeah. it's 
it's sunk. It's underwater. I don't think we should go downstairs. But we could go upstairs. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go get Bob. Yeah. I can carry him upstairs. Can yes. dragons live underwater? Oh, <gasps> do they? Black dragons do live underwater. Yes, they can. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I got the black dragon. I wonder um, if we can somehow check where we hear the dragon snores coming from. Oh yeah. Ash, without any check required, you do know that the dragon is above you right now in room okay. number three. You can hear the snoring there. Um, Fesh, I feel like, would be a little more astute than Brother Dogoff and possibly even Muskrat. Uh, as you investigate and look around this room, you see that the first level, the dungeon, is an air pocket underneath the swamp. But there is still the strong smell and odor of swamp water underneath. But it appears not to be have completely submerged, although it is underwater. Would the book be in there? Kazuka, you were also around this room. What are you paying attention to and how are you engaging? Um, any entrance to upstairs to Dragon is what I'm paying attention to. It is a set of slippery stairs with some strange translucent slime protecting the way. And again, if you look up into the ceiling, you can see that the stairway leads into a giant dragon-sized crater. And as you peer into that ceiling, you can see the wriggling of a large tail wreathed in coins and treasure and wealth of the nations. All right. Um, I'm going to communicate to my team because this is going to be important. I have blood and thunder. And I think our game master makes up the criteria to that whenever we get to it. But this is an ultimate thing that I could add to other ultimate power weapons to increase their efficiency and destructive capabilities. So know that that's there. So anybody else who has like magical super whatever going on. I don't know how strong this dragon is, but all I know is that we can inflict some serious pain. I have fire. If and when we need to. I got a wand. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't, well, we don't know. That just shoots electricity. It's got lightning in it. You don't even know how to read. Blood and thunder and lightning. Think about it. (laughs) That's a start. As Muskrat says it, it kind of like slowly discharges in the air and kind of strikes near Brother Dogoth and nearly missing him by an inch. What? All you have to do is say lightning? See? I'm proficient in this. (laughs) Say say lightning again. See what happens. Lightning! Just like starts to zap off into the area. Her hair stands up on end. Perfect. I, I meant to go right there. See? Are you going to electrocute the dragon? I don't know. Well, putting it in water wouldn't do anything good. So I'm thinking the opposite would. So, yeah. Yeah, we, we should try. I mean, it's a thing. I not It's not really mine, but... Besh, as the stars have led you here, how do you proceed? Well, I'm realizing that I can possibly levitate upwards into the room and avoid the stairs. And maybe I can find something, a rope or something to help my teammates come upwards. Yes, you may. Do we have a rope I can use? We do. On on him, on Kazuka. That's right. I use my rope. I I actually have a grappling. You can take You have a grappling hook? Of course I have a grappling hook. You have a grappling hook? (laughs) Every monk has a grappling hook. You are the most boring guy in the whole world, and you're like, I've got a grappling hook. <laughs> I would also like to add, everyone has done such a great job hook. role-playing their character, so you each get a hero coin. From here on out, you should, Yay. don't forget, you can write it down. You get one free re-roll. You may transfer it if you need to. Besh, you intend to go to the third level then? into the lair of the dragon? Yes, I do. I'm reading the slippery stairs. Um, with no difficulty at all, I just need you to roll to cast 
that levitate spell two or higher. That is d20. Yes. Ah. It's a one. I think oh, this, there's something wrong with this dice. Third, are you on the third floor? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> do you do you want do you want to reroll? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because you're on the third floor. <laughs> so what? That comes in handy. Yeah. Go. Ahead. That was quick. <laughs> Seventeen. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here, well, Cami, um, you make a mistake that nearly ends the mission, but you correct yourself. Would you like to take the wheel on that? Oh, sure. Yeah, I I nearly have super speed on my levitation. I would have shot straight through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like a I, jet pack. I, I was summoning too much energy, so I calmed myself down and got into my meditative state before calmly levitating into the room. And of course, it looks completely natural to the rest of you, but Fesh kind of just... Poof like spurts upwards a little bit <laughs> and then descends back down gracefully and then gently moves up with the grappling hook allowing each of you to pass by the stairs unbothered by this translucent slime one by one hand over hand you arrive fesh helping you upwards quietly you feel the breath of this dragon and, st and st lying before you wreathed in gold and moss and slime and mud lays the largest creature you've ever seen its neck wide enough for all four of you to stand abreast its nostril large enough for your entire body to fit inside its body breathing slow and quietly after 80 years of slumber and rest. And you see the mounds of treasure. And in between the dragon's clutches, there lies the book. This is a great opportunity for you to ask questions about this room and build it together. So if we can consult with each other, just on our plan. So the dragon's asleep, but uh, I sense it'll wake up if we try to take the book. So what was yeah. our plan with the sheep again? We're going to lure it away. Lure him out so that we yeah. can get lure the dragon. Keeping in mind that if you wake up the dragon, there is a chance it lays waste to a nearby city. Hmm. So we don't want that. Yeah. We don't want that. Now no. there's there's a chance that it doesn't. There's a chance that it decides to do something else horrible. Or even quite possibly do something maniacal, perhaps. It's a ancient being. It's unpredictable. So there's nice. always a second chance. But yes. Can I stealthily, sneakily try to go get it? You, you may, if that's your question. <laughs> Brother Dogoth, do you have a question about this scene? Well, what are we doing with Bob again? I don't know. <laughs> of course you would ask him. Yes. <laughs> what about Bob? What about Bob, yeah. What Bob about? is asleep, apparently, in, in a yacht. So no, I brought him up so upstairs. He's in the room with us. No, he's not. So yes. like, You did it's not go get him. him. We didn't have time for that. We were there for an hour. I had time to go get him and bring him. What is my it. astral grimoire that I have? This item, astral grimoire. That grimoire. is your. That's your collection, your journal of spellcasting designs, a pattern oh. that you've written throughout the years. It's. It is what. It is what helps you cast magic. It's okay. It's the manual you read from. Yes. Yeah. Without mm. it, you without it, you would be very hindered in your practice. Mm. We need to we need to set Bob off. Would I have to make a dice roll? Nope. This, this is just this is just perceiving information. You're just taking oh, it in right this now. Is taking because I wanted to know more about the dragon. You may you may you may. Is this uh, my histo my I might have read about him. Yes. In in my studies. Yes. So is it a dice roll? No no you have definitely read about him. What would you like to know? What are you perceiving? any magical ability that he has that the dragon has uh yes you have heard of mulgren's charming disposition he can roll or 
he forces you to roll a charisma check or come towards him. He can lure you to him with his charm and his voice. That's odd for a black charm. Okay. Is there anything he might want from us? The dragon. <laughs> mm. That's a good question. Oh, well. He... No. There is a, quite literally, a 1 in 17th chance, a 17% chance that he just may want a good conversation with a mortal. Oh. Very possible. If he wakes up, I would ask you to roll a d6, and on a 1, he does just want to chat. Oh. And go back to sleep. So that's kind of the mechanical format, but you can imagine that Yes, black. This black dragon Mulgren does have a fancy towards small talk. Okay. Is it possible to use calm beast on him? No. Try to make him sleep deeper. Nope. No. <laughs> I think so. Powerful magic, maybe. Uh, yes. Um, I would say if you want to cast it at fourth level which would mean you would spend all of your spell points for the day and then you'd roll 4d10 as long as you got higher than 24 points he would fall into a deeper sleep which would make it harder for him to wake up I would allow that if brother Dogoth wants to attempt it but that's enough information gathering it's time to make your decisions I'll take a volunteer first, and then you can go in order. What do you do? I'll be the martyr. Okay. <laughs> if, <laughs> would, because if he needs to kill somebody, he should kill me. The book needs to be gotten. Okay. From The book needs to be gotten out of here. Yep. And if he needs to eat me, he'll eat me. I'll fight him. All right. What do you do? What do I do? Yeah. I talk with Muskrat and say, go sneak the book. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide in plain sight okay. and start to make my way. Okay. That's it. Just, just utilizing the treasure, trying to blend in, and making my way over to where he has the book in his clutches, correct? He's holding yes. it. Yes, Muskrat, as you arrive, you see that one of his claws could fit in your hand, like a handbag. The book oh. just sitting between his fingers. You have to roll a nine or higher since you used your hide in plain sight. Okay. Uh, and I like that you gently like walked by and put on a small robe uh, that that glitters and reflects like gold in his eyes. Looks like his treasure. Yes. Okay, so ni Niner. Niner higher dexterity check. Ten. You I got a ten. Plus, plus dexterity two. I got okay. a twelve. Yes, you gingerly lift up the book. It is in your possession. He snorts. He is quiet. Just gonna be very still for a minute mm -hmm. just let him settle let him just kind of mm -hmm. get back into his sleep and then where where are my where where where's everybody else are y'all still so all there everyone is still there everyone needs to leave the room safely without waking him okay so mm -hmm. maybe y'all go first. no i stay because once he realizes that the book is gone They'll probably be pissed. And so somebody needs, okay. so somebody needs to either talk to him or he needs to eat me. Because okay, I still, maybe, have, okay. I still have blood and thunder. Bob? I've got blood and thunder, a, a spear, and the strength plus five. Okay. We'll okay. go to we'll go to Fesh then. How do you how do you Muskrat is it intending to leave? Yeah. Okay. Is it? Yes, I am. Okay. So I what if we place, we all leave, but we leave Bob there as an offering to the dragon when he wakes up? <laughs> we should have put the other book in the place. I'm still trying to figure out what the key is for. I thought about that. You could, you hmm. could pass it. Yeah, you could pass it if you want. If Fesh parts with it. I reluctantly agree. 
Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna attempt to place the book back. Yeah, or I, I hand the book over to Muskrat. Okay. And I give the the good book. Yes. To you. Um, and I I make my way back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh God. That's important right now. Okay. <laughs> Brother Dogoth, how do you proceed? I'm going to give one of my hero tokens to Fesh, because I have two. Oh, thank you. So oh. kind. But everybody will have one now. Okay, fair enough. I'm just going to stand by the staircase. Ready okay. to get down. Ready to get down? Yeah, not yet. Okay, and you're going down by rope or by staircase? Well, if the gra- grappling hook's still there, I'll go down by that. Okay. All right, and Kazuga, you're staying your ground, waiting till the coast is clear. No, everybody's like got to, to leave. Everyone's got to leave. Okay. Everybody's got to leave. I I would leave second last then. But okay. I need to ask a request of my team. All right. Does somebody have some type of magical protection spell that would protect me for a period of time? I so have that a you star guys, shield. So that you guys can get back to the town. <laughs> so if this guy wakes up. Got some protection. Okay. So, I can give you my cookies. Well, star shield. I got Lumbas bread. Star shield would be a little bit better, give you a little bit grace against the dragon's teeth, but it would require mm-hmm. fish to cast it out loud, which risks a dice roll. So it's up to you. Mm. Can't you cast it at a distance? No. How close? Proximity. Touch. And Probably. it's only one person. Is it just a. And that one is the only problem, or is it higher? Yes. Then she still needs to leave. You know? Yeah. And that one. Y'all, the be... three of you need to be in safety. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, do you cast the spell or do you wait? I'm oh. not requesting it now. All right, Kazuka's done. Muskrat, Fesh, and Brother Dogoth make a dexterity check. You're trying to be quiet. Twenty. Twenty is successful. 20. Yeah, to 18 plus 2, so 20. Ooh, graceful. Would it be really bad if I missed? What did you get? You can re-roll. Re-roll. You oh gave his God. token away. <laughs> I have a 6. <gasps> re-roll. I could give him my token. That would be that would be a fail, but not necessarily enough to wake the dragon. I would roll a second dice roll. So yes, it could wake the dragon. Would you like to re-roll? Mm. Now there's a 50% chance the dragon will wake. I'll give you my re-roll. I'll give you my re-roll. Or me too. I'll yeah. give it back for sure. Nah, I have one more. <laughs> I'll, I'll use it. Okay. Okay. All right. re-roll. re-roll. You have to take this one. Mm. It can't be any worse. You can. You don't say that. It was worse. <laughs> Dang no, it. No, it's better. It's an eight. Okay. Cool. It's better. <laughs> it's better. All right. Does the dragon wake up? I'm going to consult fate. Oh. The D6, just a 50% chance. That is a straight yes. Oh, okay. But where am I? <laughs> am I still in the room? Dang it. No. Brother Dogoth, the grappling, you're the last to go. The grappling hook betrays you. It oh, slides. No. Is Bob still on the third level with Kazuka? Is that the yes. Okay. Yeah. Bob is, Bob is still up there. The grappling hook scrapes. You fall. Uh, and you go to the ground. You do take four points of damage as your back thuds into a pile of coins that go crashing noisily. Kazuka, you hear the snort and the eyeball flicker open. And so for now, our story concludes. <laughs> I'm so sorry, we gotta end. Oh my oh, gosh. Gosh. Really? gracious. Poor that Bob. Was awesome. <laughs> <laughs>